In the very first video with this Pontiac, I had pointed out the damage on this front fender, and I think it's about time I do something about it. So we've got this front fender as well as the bumper that we're going to go ahead and take care of in this video. Going to start out by getting the headlight bezel off and get this headlight out of the way. That's going to give us a little bit more access to the inside of that fender and do some pulling on that. With the headlight bulb out of the way, we're going to go ahead and use my favorite telephone pole in my back alley and do a little bit of pulling. Okay, I know it doesn't look that great, but it's so much better than what it was before. And I do have a replacement fender, so in the future I will be swapping this fender out. But for now, at least, it looks better. I still need to do a little bit more work on this bumper, and I'll show you that a little bit later. So now after banging out that fender and readjusting the light, turn my lights on. I think I got them uh, about even. Look across the front here. Now, one of the other things I noticed when uh, I got this car, in the uh, original video when I got the car, when I drove down the alley, I turned the lights on, which worked, and then when I hit, went to hit the floor dimmer down here, this is what happened. As you can see, you can't hear it clicking. It's just on and off, basically. So, which is kind of cool if you want to warn somebody, but that's what we're going to do. So, assuming that it's the dimmer switches, so here's a replacement you can hear, that's what it should be doing, making that clicking. So we're just gonna go ahead and swap it. So if you've never done that in one of these older cars that has a floor dimmer, this is what you need to do. If you got carpet or rubber mat, you need to pull it back so you can get to it. And quite simply, it is just mounted to the floor using uh, two screws, and then it just has that uh, plug harness on top of it. So we're gonna go ahead and swap that out. So let's just go ahead and test the system. Let's go ahead and get this jack removed. And then let's plug our replacement dimmer in. Which, by the way, I had this dimmer switch just sitting in my cabinet. No idea what it came from. It could be a 75 Nova. Could be any, any car, any GM from who knows when. I mean, this might even be the same thing that's in my 64 Impala. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, give this one a try and see what happens. I'm gonna reach down here and uh, click our high beam switch. There we go. So here's another thing that bothered me since I bought the car. You'll see in an earlier video that the glove box door was a mess. And what had happened when I bought this, the seller had said, oh, you just need the, the piece the metal piece for up in here to, to latch it. Uh, the reality is, even though that is missing, it was more than that. The uh, other lock was in the lock position and I guess someone had lost the key for that particular lock. Uh, I think all the locks have been changed on this car. So they apparently pried it enough that they were able to cut the housing to the lock to get it out. So I took the glove box door off because it just made more sense to drive it around like that than to have the glove box door stuck down. 
and they were doing all kinds of crazy things like using duct tape and I think hot glue and who knows what else to hold that up in there. Um, I've since gotten the lock out of the glove box door and I cleaned all the sticky stuff off of it so I could reuse it. But buying a new lock is somewhere around $30. And I actually have another glove box door that's actually from a 75 Nova, which is exactly the same. I don't have a key for that lock, but it's in the unlock position, so it's usable. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is just paying the whole glove box door from the 75 and put it on here until later on I'll get a, a nice match key lock set. But for right now, what I want to do is get all this tape residue and all this uh, nasty stuff off of here. So here's the latch catch that needs to be installed here in the dash, and that's what was missing. So I found this in the junkyard a while back. This is probably also 75 Nova, but it will fit in here just fine. Here is the uh, glove box door that I'm going to be using to replace the uh, original one with. This is again out of a 75 Nova. I think it was a four door I pulled this out of in the junkyard, but it's got um, a good latch mechanism on it. As you can see, I have it latched and then Simply give it a turn, pops open. This one is not locked, so that's fine. Don't really need to lock it, so this will do fine. I'm just going to clean this, hit it with a scotch pad, tape it off, and blow some uh, satin black paint on it. Okay, so this is showing the finished product. The whole dash is all cleaned off. We've got our glove box, replacement glove box lid in place. So we got this working pretty good. It does hang up just a little bit there. But uh, for the most part, it looks pretty good. Everything works. So, pretty happy with it. So this still is up. So we're going to want to pull that down. So here's how we're going to end up doing that. So the concept is pretty simple. I'm just going to use my lift, which is going to be stationary. And then uh, have a jack underneath the cross member and go ahead and start lifting the car which holding that bumper in place should then force it downward. So do this a couple times and uh, actually uh, use a little bit of uh, some hammer work on the backside of the bumper and that'll help to relieve some of that tension and hopefully help to hold that shape. To add a finishing touch, I'm gonna put on my US 30 drag strip license plate that's from the 70s. Now one more project I wanna take care of the carburetor on here was originally from my Impala, so I wound up getting a rebuild kit off of eBay, and I'm going to rebuild the original carburetor that came off this engine and see if we can get it to run a little bit better.
I wanted to show you this before I had rebuilt the carburetor. I noticed that the choke assembly, the rod was in the wrong place and it wouldn't allow the choke to open all the way. So it's no wonder it ran so poorly when I first got this car. I decided not to show you removing the old carburetor and installing the recently rebuilt carburetor. But what I want to do at this point, since it is cold, is I wanted to test to see if the choke would engage when I hit the throttle, which you would normally do at first cold start. Now I already did that and unfortunately the camera wasn't recording, but when I did, indeed, the choke closed as it should. I gave it two pumps, so now I'm ready to do a cold start and we'll see how it works. that a win we got this choke working good now so i think overall this carburetor should be pretty good but the best way to test it let's do a road test so i'm gonna put the air cleaner back on this let it warm up a little bit more and hit the road Straight. So sometimes you can align these things with just eyeball. 
not the best. I'm sure long term I'd find some tire wear, but it's gonna get me by for now. But uh, really, I mean, it's uh, pretty darn nice. Get some of these rattles out of here, get my seat a little bit better. Uh, really don't like them shackles. It's really a rough ride. So maybe I might have to look at uh, taking those shackles off and maybe just put some air shocks on it. Air shocks aren't much better, but uh, I put them on my wife's Nova, and that actually does, flies a lot better than this does, and it has the same height as this with the shackles, so that'd be something I look at. Also, I got some wind noise in here. All the door seals are bad. I bought new seals. I'm just debating if I put them in now before I paint this car, which I have no idea what I'm going to paint it. If I'm going to paint it, when I'm going to paint it, no idea. But I do intend to do an engine swap. I picked up an engine on Marketplace. I've not revealed it yet. I'm going to go through it. But uh, that will be coming up in the spring. That's going to do for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, a little more work done on the Pontiac. Still have a lot of things I'm doing on this car. Um, I went, uh, doing some little tricks with the wheels, so you'll see that in the future. Um, replacing the bench seat in here because it's really soft and really bad. Um, might do something with that rear end at some point. Whether if I can locate a posi rear for it, that'd be awesome. Um, not too wild about the shackles, so I might do something about that. Might go with air shock, see if I can get a little bit better ride out of it. Um, at some point, got to do metal work on it. Um, it's got a rubber mat in here. It's pretty rough. I don't know. Maybe I'll do carpet in here at some point. I am smelling a little bit of coolant, so I think the heater core might not be perfect. So I might have to be swapping that out. And uh, then there's going to be an engine swap coming this spring. So I'll reveal a little bit more detail about that in the future. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, hit the bell if you want notifications anytime I have a new video up. And as always, thanks for watching.